Well, my friends, this is the weird part of the course. This is the part of the course where we throw Euclid right out the window and we see what happens if we say, you know what, maybe those hyperbolic parallel postulate people have a point. Maybe uh, we should, oh, well, they have a point. It's called point P and it's not on line L. Ha, ah, anyway, so sorry. Um, we figure out what happens if we take the hyperbolic parallel postulate instead. So here are some things that are true if you accept the hyperbolic parallel postulate. Uh, the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is strictly less than 180. There is no triangle in the hyperbolic plane whose angle sum is 180. None. Which means that every triangle has a positive defect, and defect is obviously less than 180. Every quadrilateral has an angle sum less than 360, because this depends on that. Um, this is a curious thing. We'll talk about this in two slides. Uh, the summit angles of a Sakari quad are acute. Uh, just a reminder about what that is. So you have Sakari quad A, B, C, D. We know that these two angles are congruent. Um, if they are both right angles, then you've got a rectangle and an angle sum of 360. So instead, uh, we know that they must be acute. They can't be obtuse. It makes the angle sum too big. So they must be acute. And this looks like some sort of Pokemon. Anyway, the fourth angle of a Lambert quad is acute. Same reason. Uh, in a Lambert quad or an Alhytham quad, the length of a side between two right angles is less than the length of the opposite side. So let's talk about what we mean by that. Uh, we traditionally draw Lambert quads or Alhytham quads this way. One, two, three right angles. So what we're saying here is that this length is less than this length. That's what we're saying. We're saying that MB has to be greater than LA and LB has to be bigger than AM. So uh, we know from work you did in a previous lesson that uh, it can't be that this is the small one and that's the big one. So then the only question is why can't they be the same? Why can't it be that LA is MB. So let's think about that. If LA is MB, then this is a Sakari quad, two congruent sides, two right angles. And if this is a Sakari quad, then that's a right angle. And if that's a right angle, then you've got a rectangle. Rectangles don't exist in hyperbolic geometry. So that that means that in a Lambert quad or an Alhytham quad, the length of a side between two right angles is less than the length of the opposite side. Uh, similarly, in a Sakari quad, the length of the altitude is less than the length of a side. Uh, why? Why is that? So let, just a little bit of vocabulary here. What do we mean when we even say that? So you've got some Sakari quad or a Kayam quad. Uh, a and B have the right angles, C and D like so. When we talk about the altitude, we talk about that segment that connects the midpoint of the summit to the midpoint of the base. And you proved in a previous lesson that this segment that connects the midpoint of the summit to the midpoint of the base is perpendicular to the summit and perpendicular to the base. Well, what does that mean? That means that AFED is a Lambert quad and -E -E BFEC is a Lambert quad. And applying this here twice, it must be that the length of this side is greater than the length of the altitude. The length of this side is greater than the length of the altitude. It also follows that the length of the summit has to be bigger than the length of the base. Uh, that also has to follow, and for exactly the same reason. Uh, next video up talks about how similarity implies congruence. That's a big deal. See you there.